Hello and welcome to Mac Format's weekly Apple extravaganza. I'm Chris Finn. I'm Matt Bolton. And on this episode we talk about an email from Steve Jobs. The true cost of phones. And some really rather lovely speakers. But we start, of course, as always, with news from the world of Apple. Five minutes, start the clock. And it is this email from Steve Jobs, which has come up in the Apple-Samsung trial. So there's the big patent trial that Apple has brought against Samsung uh, in the States. Um, and John Gruber made the very good point that uh, is it a good idea to have done this because there's so much stuff coming out that really reveals the internal workings of Apple. Yes. Um, and since you gave me a quiz last week, I have a quiz for you oh. based on this email. Good. All right, so this email was um, sent on 24th of October 2010. It was sent to the top 100, which is, I'm sure you know at least, is a random group of people that Apple thinks are important within Apple. And they get together, as far as you know, once a year. When you say random... Well, I mean, it's not just like a senior, better. It's not just a senior level exec thing. Um, so this email was sent out, and this was the draft agenda for the meeting that was coming up. So this email, 24th of October 2010. Okay. It was in this email that Steve Jobs used the phrase holy, wall, holy, holy war yes. on Google. So here's your first question. Um, which of these statements is correct? Post PC products now account for 66% of our revenues. 32% of our revenues, or 74% of our revenues? In 2010, mm. October 2010, so the shortly I after the first iPad. iPad has just launched. The 31. No, 66. Crikey. So iPhone was that big already. As, f as, as early as October 2010, or at least in the run-up to this meeting, which is going to happen later in that year, three quarters or two thirds of Apple's revenue is coming from post PC devices, which we infer is just meaning iOS essentially at this yep. stage. Um, the iPad outsold the Mac within four months, nine months or six months. What do we mean by outsold? Sold more units than, uh, it, not cumulatively, Yeah. in the quarter, uh, I think. Three months. Six. Three wasn't one of your options. So it definitely wasn't that. <laughs> Can I have the options again? Four, well, I've told you the answer now. Yeah. Four, nine, and six. Uh, iCloud. This was, 2011 was defined by Jobs as being the year of the cloud for Apple. Um, and there was a sentence regarding the, the cloud. We want to tie, tie all of our products together so the experience for the customers is better, mm -hmm. so we further lock customers into our ecosystem, and so that we leapfrog Microsoft and Google. Oh, those are my three options. Yeah. I think I actually saw this line. Right. It's, isn't it to lock them into our yeah. ecosystem? Yeah, and but isn't that, that's one of the things that, that I, I take from Gruber's comment about this really, really revealing the internal workings of Apple because um, uh, we always comfort ourselves with the comforting fiction that Apple does things for the customer's yes. good. But there is a bold statement from Steve Jobs that they are doing the cloud in order to lock people into that ecosystem. But we knew Steve Jobs was... A raving egomaniac. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Apple TV. Was Apple making... An accessory for iOS devices, a strategic play for the living room, the third plank of our iOS strategy. This is what Steve Jobs called it? Yeah. What was the first one? Uh, an accessory for iOS devices. That? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in fact, he called it a must-have accessory for iOS devices. Um, but that's quite interesting, the fact that LTV is explicitly seen as an iOS accessory, nothing else. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an enrichment of the iOS ecosystem. Well, he's, yeah, but then he's talking about that in the context of... What it was in 2010 and yeah. still is now. Which was, which com takes us on to. Um, four years is a long time. Regarding, so at this time, I think I've got this right, the old Apple TV was still existing, the one that looks a bit like the, the old, the, the new Mac Mini, the long, low, flat one, not the little black one. Oh, was it? So okay. regarding the Apple TV 2, which is the black puck one, we're now on the three, but that's the same form yeah. factor. Um, Apple listed four strategy as apps, browser, Siri, apps, browser, partnerships, apps, browser, magic wand. Oh, I've seen this. Yeah. It's the magic wand. Yeah. Yeah. Because Apple has patented a system for a remote control system that is like a magic wand. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, this is a tricky one. Open question this time. Um, in what three areas in 2010 did Apple perceive it was lagging behind Android? This is pre-iOS 5. I'm going to have to rush you. Multitasking. Uh, integrated services and... Malware. <laughs> Those are all valid suggestions. The ones that were given are notifications, okay, valid, yep. that was solved in iOS 5, tethering and speech. How did it plan to leapfrog it? Better iOS. Siri. More stuff. Oh. That was their plan That's... to leapfrog 
the speech stuff. Um, and then oh, lastly, right, okay, um, yeah. in the section where Eddie Q updates the top 100 on the store, what band is singled out as of strategic importance? There's one the band Beatles. listed. Yeah, it's nuts. In this huge long list of like really important strategic stuff for Apple in 2011, the Beatles is important enough to be a part of the update to the top 100. Beautifully timed. Yes. Time to move on to your section. Yes, the wider world of tech. Thank you. And this week, uh, this is not in, an entirely new story, but I thought it was interesting, so I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Uh, well, we make the rules, so we can break I the rules. Break the rules. <laughs> uh, so this week... Uh, I can I see what it. Matt's looking at. Yes. <laughs> iFixit has said that it's teaming up with Fairphone. Fairphone has been around for a while. It's basically a transparent and ethically made phone that is coming out at some point. Is it actually ethically made? I thought it was just like sort of um, people liked it because of the sort of modular nature of it. Uh, as ethically as you can make such things. such things. It doesn't use conflict materials. I'm going to start the timer. Thanks. It doesn't use conflict materials, for example, yeah. which is no... That's very, 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 very hard to do as well. Genuinely yeah. really hard to do because there's tiny, 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 tiny amounts, but very important minerals in a, in a in any sort of computer device that come from areas that are war torn. So I was reading about it this week and what what I found most interesting was they've given a complete breakdown of what goes into its cost. Okay. The consumer price is 325 euros and they've broken it down with these fun cubes. Let's put this graphic really on the screen rather than just you showing them. Some doesn't make printing. it any uh, more useful. But the key thing is um, the actual product itself it's the the hardware, design, engineering, components, manufacturing, assembly costs €129.75 of that 325 So well less than half. Yep. Uh, and then €25 Euros is just royalties to patent holders and IP. This uh, is an interesting little window, isn't it? Yeah. Is your point, I imagine. Uh, €18 Euros estimated warranty costs. So they put aside building of the total cost, yeah. uh, 18 euros for fixes. To, su to support. Which I guess is obviously like any fix is quite possibly going to cost more than that. Yeah. But I assume but that's almost like insurance. Averaged over the yeah, exactly. number of sales of the phone. Um, $9 just to get it certified for all the various wireless things that FCC, it needs. FCC, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then a couple of dollars here and there for packaging and stuff like that. Um, they've put a bunch, 45 euros out of that 325 aside for running the company effectively if you think of that as what would normally be considered just profit profit yes but they've assigned Remind me of that it, figure 45 euros okay so they, they've assigned that um and an extra five euros just for unexpected for unexpected stuff <laughs> it says which is which breakdown. is perfectly a valid thing to do because there um, might be things happen that so you can see kind of how that tots up and that that 325 actually includes uh average vat across all the right. places they sell right. as well. The actual price to them that they've included is 257 right. euros. And then just tax, resellers, VAT brings it up to 325. Margins. And then they've also broken down... Um, I mean, that's just interesting as you can compare it to other phones, you can compare it to Apple. Yeah, and... Because the certification stuff will be largely universal. That's what I was going to say. So, we, we like, obviously, we can't, we can't suggest this is a model for how, how all phones are put together, but we can broadly suggest that there are going to be similar um, uh, breakdowns and as you say for some of the costs which are going to be pretty set but the FCC is not going to charge Apple more than it charges Samsung I wouldn't have thought No, that seems like it would be a lawsuit Yes um, But then they've also 22 euros is what they call interventions Yeah Which are their extra steps the cost of their extra steps to do things right So they pay uh, nearly two euros into a worker welfare fund that goes into on top of whatever the workers at their factories are paid, I believe. Yep. Um, it's four euros for them to source conflict-free tin uh, and similar stuff. Um, they've committed to recycling and things like that. That costs them five euros and they contribute, because they're using open source software, they contribute four euros from each phone back into the open source community. Yep. Uh, so that seems really interesting to me as well. Twenty-two euros it's to do all really of that. It's really not much, is I'd it? I'd pay twenty-two extra euros if my iPhone 
that used conflict-free yeah. materials where possible. I mean, it's not. I, I, I don't think we'll see a future where Apple offers you an iPhone steeped in blood and one that is slightly more expensive and isn't. Um, it, Apple's just going to try and fix it. But yeah, there, there is, there's no, you're not going to get the consumer choice as such between like a, a dodgy iPhone and a, and a nice iPhone. But, but it, still, what it says is that theoretically, maybe it's not that difficult to fix. Mm. But we are talking a different scale for Apple compared yeah. to Fairphone. Fairphone. Absolutely upper end may make half a million yeah. and that's probably me being ambitious yeah. Apple's going to make 50 million yeah. uh, getting enough material from conflict free sources may be a Absolutely. stumbling block Absolutely. but Apple's investing in all sorts of areas including manufacturing uh, and, yeah. and it's no it could invest in better ways to to get these materials and it's doing its um, supplier responsibility reports as well pushing yes. back to its suppliers in across the dif- across the developing world especially to bring them up to better standards. Yes, although exactly how effective that is remains subject to So what's iFixit's involvement? So they did an assessment. They kind of paired up to offer a full set of guides. Each Fairphone will come with a guide to repairing the Fairphone. Nice. And iFixit will sell tools and they'll partner on parts. And iFixit assessed how repairable the Fairphone is. (laughs) I found it very repairable, but is advising Fairphone on how to make it 10 out of 10 in iFix its repairability guide. Nice, very good. All right, let's get some ears on then with some really rather lovely headphones. And I did that headphones thing again. Actually, what I meant is oh, speakers. It's definitely speakers. Definitely speakers. Uh, unless, as you say, you're some sort of giant. And here they are. Uh, these are the Harman Kardon Novas, which are rather pretty. You've just started the timer. I have. You've also connected your iPad to the Novas. Yes, I are have. Are they going to absolutely deafen us at yes. the end of... Fi- okay, Yes, fine. Yes, they are. Uh, so uh, the Harman Kardon, obviously, has a long association with Apple, made the little uh, spherical speakers uh, for the Cube. Yep. Made the sound sticks. In fact, that was a Johnny Ive design, I believe, the sound sticks. Classic, classic design. Yep. Um, you, in fact, had a pair of creatures, I think, didn't you? No, I don't have creatures. Uh, oh, the aliens oh, you had. I have... Yeah, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, they're yeah. JBL, mm. but, which was... I don't know if it's still owned by Harman, but it was at the time. Yeah. Um, and yes, my satellite speakers look like alien faces and the sub is a rocket. But they, they, the creatures were really popular yeah. for Mac users as and well. They were, they, and they were, they, they were good as well, like really, really nice speakers. Oh, yeah. um, these we particularly liked, and in fact it was Matt that realised, in fact, Mr. Cameraman, if you come in and have a really close look at these and get nice and focused tightly on them, uh, it was Matt that pointed out um, that just after we'd seen the Mac Pro, we suddenly went, of course. That like it makes perfect sense because you've got this fan blade design kind of turbine inside them. looking thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Inside and, the glass dome. And because they're well, plastic, but yes. Mm. Um, but because yeah, and, really, yeah. <laughs> and with them being black as well. I mean, these would just look absolutely baller next to um, a Mac Pro, and they are really nicely made as well. In fact, cameraman, if you come in close on this one as well, up here is your volume control. And it's touch sensitive volume control, so you just move your finger and it will increase or decrease the volume. But what's quite nice, uh, you you might be able to pick up, I hope, is that the um, the LEDs are actually, there's different levels of dimming in them. So it's not just like light, 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 light. They actually fade and dim um, as you go for that. I'm going to turn that back down <laughs> because otherwise, as you see, the deafening will happen. Um, thank you, cameraman. You mean I retire. Uh, not, not in career terms. Um, and these, these, they do sound good. Now, I'm going to put them on. Obviously, like, you're not going to... You're, like, Matt thinks I'm mad for doing this. And he has it's a point. It's so pointless. Because you, you, you get, like, the microphone will pick them up differently and your speakers will... Put, uh, um, this is worse than trying to use the I'm going microscope. To do anyway. <laughs> no, it's really not. Nothing's worse than that. Um, and here, have some lovely um, Bruno Mars. Today I don't feel like doing anything. I bet it sounds like your normal speakers. <laughs> <laughs> worse, in fact, because it's going through certain levels of that. But... For us here in the room, you can hear they are it's a lovely, wide, open, clean sound. Yeah. Um, there is a, a bass button on it, which I haven't yet pressed, which I won't press, um, well, which will presumably make them sound a bit more... They've right. got springy bits on the back. Are these actually subs? Do they have a, I don't a know. woofer each? It would make sense. Okay. Uh, and I wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, they are they're Bluetooth, uh, NFC enabled if you have um, a phone that will use NFC, uh, which iPhones obviously don't. There's a three and a half mil uh, audio jack and an optical jack as well, which is rather nice. Okay. And you can switch between them all. So you could have them, for example, hooked up to your TV or hooked up to your stereo system, your home cinema system at home over the optical connection, um, but then connect them over Bluetooth from your uh, iOS device uh, and play some music through them, which would be quite good. They ain't cheap. They ain't cheap. They are 
hundred and seventy-five pounds, or about three hundred dollars, I think. Yeah. Um, and they're 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 just not cheap, and there's no getting around that. But like to be honest, the um, the sound sticks are still being sold, and they're I think they're still about two hundred pounds. They are really good. But they are they're phenomenally good, and that's the thing. Like all the styling in the world would be for naught if they sounded rubbish, but they do sound very very nice. And there is a definite feeling that these are comparatively premium products. They're on. Cameraman, come back in. They're on little uh, rubber bases as well, little rubber rings um, that they sit on, So, uh, and which makes them feel quite nice when you sort of put them down. Do you want to put them down? I will, thank en- you. Enjoy the, the, enjoy the of... experience. Oh, that's really soft. <laughs> it's really nice, actually. Yeah. So you, you thought I was being ridiculous, but that's actually wobbly. actually, they're rather nice, which obviously dampens the sound as well. Which yes. Is quite nice. um, uh, so I really like them, but I'm, I'm just not going to buy a pair. I, I'm, I'm all airplane now. Yeah, I'm um, not going to buy a pair because I don't have 270. <laughs> <laughs> my iMac has quite good speakers. And I still have my JVLs. You still have your JVLs. Back in day. You've got 30 good. seconds to show your other thing. Oh, yeah. Other thing is this. Which is uh, a concrete dock. <laughs> so it's a dock for your iPhone. You thread your own uh, lightning cable through it. It's various different inserts for if you want to use them. Um, uh, with a case or not, um, and it's it's solid concrete, but it's actually really nicely finished. It, you might think concrete's quite rough, but this is it's, it's really beautifully smooth and finished and lovely, and it's just got a really nice sort of and brutalist. heavy. And heavy, yeah, and in fact, it's got a sticky base, so it actually feels even heavier than it is when you try and pick it up. The idea of that sticky base being that you can just lift your phone out one-handed. And just to be clear, it's not style concrete, it is concrete. It's actually, it is a block of concrete. It is a block of your actual concrete. The timer has gone off, and it's not gone off in the speaker, so that's how I turn them down. It's all is gone it? wrong. <laughs> well, at least, at least we got a thing. Yeah. It comes oh, yeah, up. yeah. So, uh, what do you think about uh, all of the stuff we've talked about about Steve Jobs's uh, opinions? Do you think they well, what his idea for what Apple should be was? Uh, do you agree? Does this cast Apple in a different different light? Its motives and things like that. Uh, Locking customers in, man. What about the fairness of phones? Is that something that? bothers you at all? Would you consider changing your phone if it was from a more ethical source, or rather its parts were and its manufacturing was? And what about speakers? How much would you pay for a pair? Would you even consider something like this that's beautiful but nearly £300? Don't forget, you can, of course, uh, subscribe to the Mac Format YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Mac Format UK. You should definitely check out past episodes of this show by clicking on this button here. And you should absolutely, even before that, Try Mac Format's innovative and award-winning iPad edition, free insider app edition at macformat.com forward slash iPad. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Bye.